Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Kid. Today we're taking a look at a couple of interesting things that are happening within the Blender community. And of course, we talk about the brush stroke tool, which is now made available by the folks at Blender Studio. And you can get this on the extension.blender.org website. This tool, which was created by the folks at Blender Studio, was primarily used as a tool of choice in creating the beautiful animation piece called Project Gold. This was supposed to end up being a full animation, but they actually went through the route of making this a blender stylized rendering showcase now if this is going to finally become an animation is something we have no idea but this looks really good and i do appreciate every single effort that was put into this i mean project gold seems to be one of the coolest animation piece by the folks at blender foundation not disregarding the other ones but the sheer amount of work that was put into this is just phenomenal from the modeling all the way to the texturing and this stylized form of rendering will probably be a brand new way forward as artists will now be able to take advantage of the brand new plugin that has just been announced and start making cool stuff of course we're going to go through it but for those who like to get this you can simply go over to extension and download it right into blender by using the very fancy drag and drop into blender to install this or you can proceed to download this from the extension that exists in Blender. And that might simply be a much more easier way because all you have to do is go over to edit, go over to preference, go over to extensions, and you can click on install and install the brush stroke tool. And with this installed, how you get to work with it is pretty easy. Once you tap in on your keyboard and scroll all the way down, you'll notice that I've got the brush stroke tools right here. We can select that. And then you will notice that the brush stroke tool has two options. One of the things I would like you guys to understand is with the fill option, you can fill an entire mesh while the draw option would allow you to draw your own strokes and your own patterns right onto the mesh. And this is pretty interesting how you can get it going. If we take a look at Suzanne, for example, how we get to work with this is as easy as selecting the fill. And this is automatically going to fill the whole thing with brush strokes. We can contribute to the brush strokes and edit the brush stroke pattern by clicking on edit brush strokes and we can start painting. Now, before we start painting, I would like us to take a look at what this looks like when rendered. And once we switch over to cycles, you can see that it contains all black strokes and you can increase the density of the stroke if you want. Say, for example, we would like this to be about 100. We can knock that out of the pack by typing in 100 and this is going to increase the density. However, one thing you'd also notice is with this amount of stuff, we don't have the right color. So to change the color or to get the exact color, is going to be as easy as selecting the edit flow, selecting the specified color that you want. In this case, we would like this to be red. And once we start stroking, because we're editing the entire thing, the color automatically updates. And so we can edit the flow of how we want things to be, as this gives you a lot of option to do very interesting stuff. And this is how the fill tool works when you're working with a base model that has literally little to no texture and you would like to control the texturing based off a of vertex painting and if you have models that have textures how they actually respond is also very different and this is also pretty different to how the draw tool works and so let's explore how you can work with meshes with textures especially if you like to drive the strokes based off the textures so with what we've got here if we get this object selected and we go over to the field what we can do is we can scroll all the way down and instead of having curve we're going to select texture and once we've got texture selected we can now select the ideal texture color which we want and that way automatically we do have that texture that we're looking for and we can simply go all the way to density we can crank up that density get that up to 50 and in this case we can now employ the masking tool to get the best out of it so if we go all the way up right now and simply enable masking and select material select the specific material that we want and i believe the specific material should be the oak so i think that is it so if we like to you know play with the direction of this masking if we like to play with the direction of the stroke we can also go ahead and do that and we can just simply have fun working with this one if we like to make duplicates of this we can duplicate that right here and automatically this is going to make a duplicate copy but instead of having this duplicate copy just be for this same part we can now change it to the darker part which is the top part of our model so we would like that plastic part that is way up there to be what it is and we can scroll all the way down and find the appropriate texture that we would like to drive it now in this case i think we don't have a texture so i'm just simply going to eyeball that with something like that or possibly we can just go ahead and turn this back to curve and so it's going to be curve as it is the vertex color is what we're going to use now so we switch from object mode over to edit mode and then we can select the appropriate color which is going to be black now if we go over to edit flow we can now with one simple swipe, just convert everything to become black. And now 
you can see we can control the movement of stuff and we can also get some more interesting result out of it. And this is very cool. Like the fact that you do have something like this, which you can play with. And by every means, if you like to offset this a bit more, you can also use the normal offset to offset it and start making cool stuff. That is a bit too much. So we can set this to 0 0.01. That is a bit too tight. So maybe 0 0.03 maybe. And yeah, that looks something like what we can work with. So you can just simply go ahead, have this selected, go over to the edit section, make some edits and get the best out of it. And this works for literally everything. You've got characters, you want to drive those characters that way. You can simply go ahead and do that. You've got, you know, model pieces like this. You want to get them going. You can simply go ahead and do that. More so, if you're thinking about having access to all of the UI elements, you can also have access to all of the UI elements from here. And this is fully driven by geometry nodes. That's the crazy part. Every single thing that we've got here, fully driven by geometry nodes, you can open up the nodes and explore them. That is that is the, the cool part about this thing. You can open up the nodes and you can explore them. Crazy, crazy stuff going on here. And it is quite interesting to see that a tool like this is currently available and you can go ahead, download this and start creating with it. This works with both EV and Cycles, but I would definitely suggest you work with Cycles. For EV, the results that you get, you know, takes a bit of a time to calculate. But then if you want to get like maybe the best of the best result and you don't want to just simply sacrifice on what the render looks like, then Cycles is definitely one to go with. But of course, if you need something really quick, something that can get your renders out in no time, that painterly feeling, then EV is definitely the one for you. And for those who might be wondering, what about the draw? And how the draw tool works is pretty different. So if you like to draw, all you have to do is select the object, hit on the draw button, and then you can start drawing on your model. Pretty similar to what you've got with the painting that you do with your fill. It is actually the same thing. The only difference here is you do have very custom and bespoke strokes that you can assign to surfaces, which is pretty cool. So just in case you like to add direct your stylized brush, make it a bit more personalized and you know, not fully automated, then you can proceed to do this. There's this very interesting thing that you can do with this thing where you can use the fill color to actually get the particular feeling of every single thing. And then you can proceed to layer stuff up. And for those who are thinking about working with the stroke, probably like to make it a bit smoother. They do have the smoothing steps, which you can find under the stroke set of tools. There's also tons of other parameters that you can actually work with. That includes noise and also shrink wrap. And this is gonna be super useful, especially if you do have strokes that are a bit far off from the model. There is this beautiful thing that I think that maybe can come in very handy for those who like to make very simple strokes, but probably they would like to transpose those strokes and make them a bit more larger. And you can take advantage of the duplicates section. And within the duplicate section, you can do lots of things from tapering, present the amount of duplicates that you have. You can literally go to town with it. You can add more drawing layers and then you can control these layers and paint on them however you choose. There's also this very nice material section that is pretty cool. The material section covers every single material. So if you like to make changes to the material, you can simply go to town with it, make changes to the material how you choose. And this is going to affect all of the strokes that you've made you know in subsequent versions there should be some sort of updates to the material being assigned to just one particular layer and then uh, layer stacking is also something else which is missing i'm not complaining about this i'm only saying that these might be things that might be good for subsequent updates that are coming so amazing stuff is right here for those who like to explore this this is an amazing thing that is currently available totally for free for everyone to go ahead and start exploring now there's also something that i think a lot of you guys may want to explore which has to do with the brand new brushes that are now coming to blender 4.3 and speaking about blender 4.3 this is not coming out on 12th of november this is now being pushed forward to 19th of november however for those who like to explore these brand new brushes the whole redesign the new way that these brushes work, then you can simply go ahead and download the beta version of Blender 4.3 and start exploring it. There's some cool stuff happening within the geometry nodes, which would entail physics, and that looks pretty cool on its own. So this is it for those who like to explore this and possibly you like to see Project Gold, or maybe you like to catch up with any of the things that I've mentioned, then you can definitely go ahead and check it out. And of course, a huge shout out to everyone who made this possible. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. And until I see you guys in the next one. Peace.